so this one's all about attracting talent. You know, how do you, what strategies you can be using and what you um, uh, might be able to project your messaging out to help show your communities, your region as being uh, appealing to talent. Um, and I think the reason that I was asked to kind of facilitate this, the Indiana Destination Development Corporation, that's one of our, our main, uh, our objective is to um, attract and retain talent, uh, students, business, as well as visitors uh, for the state of Indiana. And when you think of it, you know, when trying to get talent in, and many of you probably know from your own experience or in talking with your uh, employers in your area that many times when they're trying to recruit talent from outside, outside of the state, um, you know, the response a lot of times is, you know, we really like the job, but why would I come to Indiana? And so um, we want to try and get the messaging out uh, to change that. Uh, and likewise with uh, students, you know, we, that, what a great resource, all of those students who come to Indiana. And Indiana is number two in the country for the number of stu net inbound students to our colleges and universities. Number two in the country. So everyone knows we have great colleges and universities. So when we get them here again, we have four to six years to get them uh, convinced that Indiana might be the place that they would like to be. So giving an experience, getting an internship. Uh, again, I was told, I have not seen any hard data on this, but that if, if a student has one internship, they're 25% likely to stay. If they have three or four, they're 80% likely to stay. So that connection with an employer, um, but also that connection with the community can be um, very helpful in making that decision. And you know, we know that businesses, uh, aren't going to be here and they aren't going to keep coming, even though we're the best place in, in the country uh, statewide to do business um, if we don't have talent or if they can't get talent. So talent has become the competitive, um, competitive element in today's society. Now, when we had 3.5% unemployment, basically full employment, we felt that. We don't feel it maybe as much now, but I think we'll get right back to that as well, where talent's going to be the big thing driving everything. Um, and then, of course, we still want to attract visitors because we all know it starts with a visit. Again, you have to have a vision in your head when you start thinking about moving someone or somewhere or taking a job somewhere that, hmm, I could live there. I've been there before and I know it. So visitors are still important because we see that as the pathway to getting them to, to come, to convert them. So attracting talent, retaining students, and converting visitors is kind of what the IDDC is all about. I'm just gonna tell one more thing and then I want you guys to start talking. We are doing some research right now with um, outside consultants and we're doing um, um, focus groups with individuals in different demographics. So some are young and, and single, some are older, well-established in the career and um, with families and basically asking them, uh, talking to them in general about the Midwest and whether or not they would, what, what it would take to move. And we don't want them to know we're talking about Indiana, but at the end, we're pretty much talking about Indiana with them. And um, it's really kind of disheartening to know that we've done Atlanta and Chicago so far. We'll do San Francisco actually tomorrow evening um, and listen to what they have to say. And I gotta tell you, nobody knows we exist. I mean, many people just have no clue what Indiana is about. And we have got to do a better job of getting that message out. And so uh, that's gonna be a big focus of ours. But, um, you know, but, but many, the younger generation in particular, it's like, it's gotta be Chicago. It's gotta be, you know, big cities for a lot of excitement. But when you get a little bit beyond that, they're more open to thinking about going somewhere. They do know that we have a, a better cost of living than a lot of places, that um, better place to raise a family. So uh, we've got some positive things out there, but across the board, it pretty much is um, no identity for Indiana. So we're gonna be working really hard to do that. Now, I know that kind of handicaps the whole state. We all have that same problem of that perception of people outside the state when we're trying to bring them in from other places. So um, um, I, we understand that and we hope to be able to working, be working with all of you to do that. So I will kind of stop here and let you all give some thought to uh, what your strategies are and the questions that you might have. Um, Blair had actually pulled together some information from all of your dashboards as far as what your strategies were. And many of you are looking at the quality of place 
quality of life, quality of experience as really trying to, to message that out. Uh, culture and arts attraction, housing being a big thing for, for that quality of place. Uh, marketing, branding, ambassadors, a welcoming and integration inclusivity uh, was kind of how she broke some of the main ones down. And there were some others as well. But, um, you know, any conversation on what someone is doing, they feel are having some success at uh, that they'd like to share, probably a good place to go. Hi, Elaine. Cindy Fry from Columbus, Indiana. Good to see you. Yes, we um, we as a team last year uh, did some research of our own. We did some focus groups in our community with young professionals. We um, we determined by talking with our employers that that their strategy really is higher to develop. So we were able to sort of zone in on um, post college graduates and specialists who are maybe coming from um, uh, schools where they've received advanced degrees and um, create a campaign um, funded by 11 partners, the Chamber, the Economic Development Organization, City, County, and some employers um, to put together a talent toolkit. Um, but we found the same things you did. Um, not only uh, were we sort of uh, swimming upstream uh, in regards to Indiana, but also being a small town in Indiana. So I'm really eager to learn um, the results of your study and, and see if we can use it to improve our efforts to attract talent to our community. Yes, good thought. And we will share that when we get kind of all of this done and get it in a, a form that's easy to talk about. We'll try and do that. Um, and something else that we're doing that we will want to share with all of you at some point, and hopefully you'll be able to use it, is um, a destination asset map. So what we're doing is plotting all of the different quality of place assets that we have in Indiana, plus the attractions, the trails, the golf courses, all those things. So then when a recruiter is talking to someone and, and they're, they're asking about Indiana and they can say, well, what do you like to do? Uh, and they can kind of show them this map. If you want golf, just look at the, all the golf courses. So it's going to be layered so that you can uh, pick and choose what things you'd like to see. But hopefully that will, again, help expose Indiana and give people some, a tool to work with to try and figure out, you know, what they can do. Because, you know, it's, you know, it, it wasn't like this when I graduated from college. I went where the job was. But, you know, now they really do say that people choose where they want to live and then they find a job. So, um, whether that's totally true for everybody or not, it, it, it does exist. And we're finding that from our younger group of individuals in our focus groups as well. Uh, when we ask them to weigh, you know, what if you have a job and you've got a location and you need to make the decision that you're going to take it, which one gets the most weight? A lot of times it's a 60-40 kind of thing, so it's, a, it's, it's somewhat balanced. But last night we had somebody who said, oh, 70 to 80 percent on the location. It's like, wow, even if the job's going to pay you better and all those kinds of things. So, um, so it's, it's important to some people. Other comments on strategies and things that you're trying? Uh, this is Carol Sergi. I'm with Hamilton County. Um, we started doing some talent attraction efforts about two years ago and primarily focused in on um, doing testimonials with people who made the decision to live and work here. We're really fortunate that we have a lot of great accolades that have been um, given to the county and the cities within the county. So we've used a lot of that. People do go out and search best places to live and, and especially people who are looking for that kind of experience. Um, so we've gotten some traction with that. We had to kind of put some of that on hold during this last year as everybody kind of did um, and focus in on just getting our people back to work. But we will get that revamped up um, refresh our testimonials. We're also doing um, a pretty extensive veterans attraction effort. Mm -hmm. um, we're working with InVets on that, mm -hmm. but we're doing something specifically to the county. It's one of our 21st century talent region groups, uh, committees that are focused on that. So mm -hmm. that's another big um, thing that we're working on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And Carol, to your point with veterans, you know, Indiana has now um, made their pension dollars non-taxable. So um, that happened a couple of years ago under the under Governor Holcomb. And uh, that's that should help with getting on a list for some of them to look at when they're when they're leaving their their um, service. Um, another thing I almost forgot to, to mention 
January 25th, we're going to do our first real campaign. And many of you know about this because you helped us pull this together, but Hoosiers by choice. It's, it's going to be a 90 second videos that were created by individuals who moved here from somewhere else. And, you know, maybe a lot of them, and, um, you know, reluctantly, maybe just to take a job or something, but didn't know what they were getting into. They get here and they love it. And so these are great stories. They're, they're their own videos that they did. Um, and we'll start putting those out. It'll be a year long campaign. And hopefully all of you can tag into those and, and actually make the most of those as well, because there's some really heartwarming stories uh, that people share about their own experiences and you know, why they were concerned about coming and, and why they're so happy they did and, and why they don't plan on leaving. Um, so we've got that kind of campaign that we're going that hopefully, hopefully can be helpful to you all as well. Ryan, this Ryan's is Ryan Twist. <laughs> this is uh, Ryan Twist from Northeast Indiana. Um, as, as you know, since you were there for the announcement, we uh, in February of last year um, launched a talent attraction brand, Make It Your Own Northeast Indiana, and um, created a lot of assets and resources that we've used for um, digital marketing campaigns, uh, targeting folks outside of the region and some of the um, communities that we've seen the most traction in and from. Um, and then, so that's been a big push. We've created some assets. One of the coolest things I think that we've done just from a thing that I like perspective is created these things that we call lookbooks. And they are, um, it's a, just a little handheld thing that we give out. Um, we, uh, we also, have a, uh, it lives in a digital format, um, but it's uh, just a small square pocket size guide that has a visual, tells the visual story of Northeast Indiana across our 11 counties. We have two versions, one for spring, summer, one for fall, winter. Uh, but they really, they're, they're composed, uh, comprised entirely of real life Instagram photos from Northeast Indiana residents. So there's no purchased photography in it. It's right. the, what Northeast Indiana looks like through the eyes of its residents. Um, so that's, um, that's just an asset that we've created. Um, and then in, last year, um, sometimes better to be lucky than good. We uh, planned um, early on to uh, launch a mural festival. So um, the tagline was 11, count 11 murals, 11 counties, 11 days. Uh, we raised sponsorship dollars from private companies and some uh, foundations, and we brought in um, some local but mostly national or international um, uh, muralists to put really, really great murals, one in each of our counties. And so Huntington got one, Garrett, Indiana, and DeKalb County um, got a beautiful mural, um, uh, Fort Wayne. So we kind of spread the love there, um, but made a big show of it. Um, the reason that when I say better to be lucky than good, we were about, I think it was the only festival um, over the course of 2020 that didn't get canceled because it was completely designed and tailor-made for social distancing and you could interact with it in a safe way, even if it was just driving by. Um, but so that, that part of that was for the internal pride. Part of that was for a little bit of tour, destination tourism. Um, but mostly it was about marketing that and building the brand of Northeast Indiana. And we actually got a story uh, published in Forbes mm -hmm. about that. Um, so got a lot of good press. Um, we had a, a huge, we, one of our key metrics that we track are did, um, national media impressions. So stories posted about Northeast Indiana, Fort Wayne and national media and how many people interact with that. And we had a huge number due to that Forbes article and, and a, a lot of other Inside Indiana Business others co covered it, but to get that Forbes um, right. coverage was really great just to sort of build that, try and build that brand. Right. Good. Thanks, Ryan. Hi, so, Elaine. Heather Ennis, Northwest Indiana Forum. Um, our, obviously, our largest talent attraction project is the double tracking Westlake corridor expansions mm -hmm. uh, that are happening along the South Shore commuter rail line. Uh, but then in addition to that, we have uh, a moving campaign trying to uh, continue to attract residents um, that are looking to escape the higher taxes in Illinois. And then um, a digital ambassador campaign, which is trying to help uh, younger folks to understand the assets that are here in Northwest Indiana and why so many people continue to love it here. Yes. Good. I think our Hoosiers by choice will play right in that for you. And that ambassador idea, I think, is, is good. You said you're going to do a, um, a virtual ambassador program, did you say? Yes. So it's a digital ambassador program where, uh, you know, s similarly to what, what you're doing, the 90 seconds Hoosiers by choice, but, but folks that live here, what they find exciting about uh, being here, the things that they're doing, doing, uh, taking 
pictures when they're out doing things mm -hmm. in Northwest Indiana saying, you know, oh, apple picking. Oh, look, we're uh, kite surfing on, mm -hmm. on Wolf Lake. Oh, we're, you know, doing this or that. And so just, you know, really showcasing the opportunities in the region. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny, last night I mentioned we were doing the focus groups with Chicago residents, and the last group was the older group. They were established in their careers, and they had family, children that were high school or college age. They were quite aware of the benefits of moving to Indiana, much more so than our younger group about, you know, less expensive to live there, t lower taxes. Some of them got very critical about their own state and, and how it was being managed at the time, so... Um, you know, I think if they, if any of them would find the job, they'd be over in Northwest Indiana in no time or didn't find a job, but even get that tracking down where they can easily get back and forth. It'll be pretty easy. It's, that's going to be a boon for you guys, I'm sure. Yeah. So Elaine, Linda Wallace Hi. here, Hi. and, um, I'm, I work with the Center of Workforce Innovations. We've met before, but I mm -hmm. say I work for Heather Ennis and the Ignite Band. So, um, <laughs> I wanted to add to what Heather said. Um, uh, that is uh, something that was created, the Northwest Indiana Biz Hub. And what that is, is a, a website that, you know, pulls together all of the resources, about 52 different organizations that are trying to help small businesses. And we see that also as a part of talent attraction because um, we, this is an interactive uh, um, website and it has kind of a concierge service to it. Mm -hmm. And so know once again that a lot of Chicago, Illinois folks are trying to start businesses and our business environment is so much better here in Indiana. So we also see that as a way to let uh, younger people or anyone starting a business come here. We will really help you right. get going. And right. so um, we're, we're optimistic about how that could help as well with talent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Sounds like a good one. Good strategy. Elaine, you, because you're doing this focus groups, I just have a question because I have two children in their 20s that went to school here and moved away. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they don't want to come back because of the political environment here. They don't want to feel that they're living in such a non-progressive state. Mm -hmm. And they're mm -hmm. pretty vocal about it. Mm -hmm. Has that come up in any of your um, groups? You know, it really hasn't too much, um, again, just Atlanta and Chicago so far. They all want diversity. They all want um, diversity at all levels, in the food they eat, the cultures they see, the, the um, you know, diversity in gender and lifestyle, everything. So some of them say that. Now, they don't come around to criticizing Indiana so much about that, but we know it's there. And actually, I think when we did um, listening sessions around the state that maybe some of you participated in several times, that was brought up. And, you know, we may think we've solved it, but the perception is still out there regardless. And uh, we really need to kind of work hard on that uh, and, and, and kind of keep moving that needle up because it is, it is a barrier. It is a barrier for a lot of people, and we need to kind of work through that. So good point, Cindy. Who else wants to share or ask a question? I can share. I'm Bethany Hartley from the South Bend Elkhart region and the South Bend Elkhart Regional Partnership. Uh, we didn't go far to find our name. Um, and uh, so with Talent Attraction Retention, we're an organization that has five pillars. That's one of our pillars. Then we have industry growth, um, entrepreneurship, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and education and workforce. So a lot of them all embed within one another, especially talent and diversity, equity, and inclusion. And um, two of the main highlights I would say over the past year have been through um, the Lilly Foundation, we were able to receive a grant and we uh, are producing the Lyft Network. And so we created a South Bend Elkhart Digital Innovation Hub. Um, I can't remember who was talking, uh, our neighbors to the West, I think we're talking about their biz hub similar idea of having resources all in one place. They are tied directly to specific industries that we are focusing on in our region, as well as entrepreneurship in general. So we have all of our assets put into that portal that are accessible to all, um, and our partners can update their profiles, that sort of thing. So we're excited we launched that at the end of last year. Mm -hmm. And then we also produced, um, we went through a, pro um, a process of developing a regional brand. So we 
um, got that created. So it's we plus you. And so we're going to, mm -hmm. the goal was to launch it in 2020. We soft launched it by doing a series of videos that highlighted some of the work we've been doing with that branding. Mm -hmm. um, and this next year, um, I took some notes. I heard some other folks talking about the ambassador programs and different activities, doing more of that activation on the branding. Mm -hmm. So those are our two main things we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I think what you'll find in a lot of the videos that we'll be pushing out um, almost every one of them say how great the people are, mm -hmm. how nice Indiana is, how easy it is to get engaged. And I think, you know, keep pushing out that message because it's true. And, mm -hmm. and you know, being able to facilitate that and get people connected when they come in, that's kind of the glue that once we get them here, then they decide to stay because they like the people and they like the environment and they like doing um, and getting engaged the way they could. And not only just their work, but their neighborhood, their, their uh, social clubs, their uh, other things that go on as well. So it's important. And I would say, Elaine, one thing that we've learned, um, so I, I serve as one of my roles as Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And so we are exploring the whole theme of access. And so mm -hmm. while we are uh, an inviting and we're happy to make connections, mm -hmm. it's that first layer of how do I just get connected to someone that will connect me and not having to know Bethany to know 10 other people to figure out how you get access to capital. So we're really looking at those systems and structures right. to make it more equitable um, because we also have the folks that they've lived here for generations and so there's a whole net right we all we all have this in our communities the old boys club and it's like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. once you're once you know you know but it could take someone a long time to know right. um, so we are looking at that as well mm -hmm. good good Hey, Bethany. Um, my name is Christine Tarquinio, and I'm from Jefferson County, just across the river, your friendly Kentucky friends. Mm -hmm. um, I run Live in Lou, which is our talent attraction, retention, and development initiative. We have a program called City Champs. Um, that is an ambassador program um, that we've been um, working to grow for the past couple of years. So if you want to pick brains or anything, I'll put a link to the website in the chat, but I'm happy to talk to you about how we've structured it. We've got about 65 people that we've trained um, to be our ambassadors and we use them in a variety of ways. There's only about 45 on the site right now because we just trained 20 more um, last month and we're getting all their bios up. But I'm happy to talk through that with you if you have any interest. I do, thank you. Yes, we'll take you up on that. Yeah, I think that's great. If we can get that personal connection, I know a lot of the regions have done that, have started some type of ambassador program uh, at some level. I think that is important, that human connection. Well, I have a question for all of you regarding your, your groups, your planning groups. Does everyone include or is, are the, the destination marketing organizations from your counties included and around the table to work with you all pretty consistently? Yeah, I'm getting a lot of shaking heads. If not, I really would encourage you to invite them and get them at the table as well, because they may have some tools that they can help. Uh, and if you get all your energy focused together, uh, it might be um, you know, more efficient and effective as well. What else? Anybody else have any uh, secret sauce or questions to try and find it? Elaine, this is Carol to Hamilton County again, just to kind of emphasize what you just said about the tourism aspect. Um, I'm actually considered part of the staff of the, of the tourism office. Um, Jordan on the call is our data guy. We really dive in deeply with um, melding the tourism information with what our attraction piece is and um, use that with all of our 21st century talent region efforts. Um, it's really great to have their expertise and some of their um, marketing abilities that go beyond what I can do with my budget. So that's helpful, not only from an asset standpoint, photos, video, um, all the things that we do to sell both to tourists and to people we want to come live here. Um, it's a great connection. Right. Well, and it's the same message. It really is the same message. You get somebody to visit to get, and, and to get someone to want to think about living here and moving here for a job. Um, so we just have to get that out. And we're going to be trying to do a lot of work to help you all be able to do that as well and, and sharing with what we can come up with and what our resources are. Because if we can really get everyone in the state focused on the same message, be it 
what you call a brand message or an icon, whatever, think of the amplification that we get. If we get every corporation to use it, every association, every nonprofit, every organization to be pushing this out, every university and college, people will start to recognize that, oh, that's Indiana. Okay, now I get that. Uh, the governor often says that he's been in conversations where someone said to him, Purdue, that's in Indiana, followed by Notre Dame, that's in Indiana. You know, they know the great institutions again, they just don't associate them with us. So we need to do a better job of doing that. Um, something I thought you were gonna start mentioning, Carol, as well, is trying to recruit talent that has left. And you know, that Hoosiers that have gone somewhere else, uh, maybe for a job to get started or whatever, and now we wanna try and get them back. And I know you've got a program that you're really focused on to do that. Yes, we're working really closely with a company called TMAP. Mm -hmm. um, we have agreements with all of our local school systems and we are connecting with our high school alumni and using that as a resource to help not only um, figure out where our people have gone and what their skill sets are, and then to invite them back and connect them with the companies that we have in Hamilton County to help them get jobs. Um, we wanna make sure once we um, put that effort out there to invite them to come back, we can connect them then to the jobs that we have right. available. Right, and TMAP's oh, got a oh. great strategy for doing that. I'm sorry, somebody had a question? Uh, yeah, I was just gonna ask a follow-up question. We looked at that as well up in this region and it, we haven't, as, to the best of my knowledge, haven't done a lot of movement on it. I'm just curious what, where you may be in the process and have you seen success? Do you feel good about the work? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've started to see success. We actually um, contracted with them over a year ago, but then, you know, this year, past year happened. So getting, um, I have to give our school systems a lot of credit with all of the stuff they had on their plates, just trying to manage teaching on a day-to-day -day basis that changed all the time we still kept that movement going forward to continue to get those agreements in place and for them to start sharing their information. So the point we're at right now, we've gathered um, close to 30,000 names of alumni for the most part in the past 10 years. And then we will be um, continuing to add to that, reaching out to them, um, putting together a marketing message and then our next step is really to get our companies more engaged so that we can make those connections to get those jobs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure when we will launch it, but we're gonna do a um, Boomerang Hoosiers video series as well. All of the people who did leave and then decided to come back, telling their stories of why they chose to come back. Because uh, many of them did leave for a job and then decided that this, you know, sometimes we always think the grass is greener somewhere else and sometimes you have to go and experience it and recognize the fact that uh, it was just as green here as it is anywhere. So um, hopefully we can get that going uh, later this year. And, you, and again, when you come across people like that, get their names, get them to me so we can get them on a list, either for the Hoosiers by choice, because you all know people who fit that bill as well, or by the, um, or the Boomerang Hoosiers, because um, we want to see them from all over the state. That's always our goal. I don't want to have to start calling on people, but I will. <laughs> Especially all these people who haven't turned their camera on. Which hopefully means they're still around. Well, I, I would just like to ask a little bit more about the, the app that they were just talking about. I didn't catch the name of it. We're, we're working with the schools and the alumni associations. Um, could you give me the name of that or contact information? I, I'm not sure I heard exactly. Was it Teen App or Team App? It's not an app. It's a okay. company called T-Map, T-M-A-P. And Carol maybe wants to say more about it, but... Yeah, they were created um, a few years ago when they really started to see Bill Osterley, who is a local entrepreneur who created Angie's List, if you're familiar with Angie's List, um, had left that company, was looking for another opportunity. Um, you know, entrepreneur, um, I can't say that word, um, always look for where are the opportunities. And he saw the opportunity with the fact that our low unemployment was really begging the question, how are we gonna provide the talent? And that became very clear when Amazon was looking at the state. And um, they then started working with TMAP to see how can they 
um, look to see what our talent base looks like and could we support them coming here. So that kind of started it. And then Mitch Daniels at Purdue um, also was um, a friend of theirs and they started working with the, the university. So they actually have agreements already in place with Notre Dame, Purdue, IU, all, Ball State, all the big schools. And they started a, um, a similar program, but on the college level. And so um, I became familiar with what they were doing. We wanted to connect with our local people and said, how can we bring this down to the county level and connect with our own residents who have left to get them back, the boomerangs. And that's how we created this high school program um, that we don't think is being duplicated anywhere else right now in the country. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to get this off the ground and it'll be something that can be replicated for other people, both in the state and across the country. Yeah, they actually use a lot of social media data. I mean, they, they really dig to find out about these people and what they're doing and where they were from in Indiana and, and then and match them up with employers as well. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty creative program and, and one that, you know, I really hope they have lots of success because it'd be good for Indiana. Okay, we only have a few minutes left. So um, if you haven't said anything and you'd like to, please chime in. Elaine, I have a question for you. Uh, I'm an extrovert. If y'all didn't pick up on that, I can talk forever. Uh, but my question is around those the few things that you mentioned, uh, initiatives at the state level. How might we um, be proactive in, in being uh, ambassadors in our own regions and just staying connected to that information? Right. Well, we're going to we have a newsletter that um, you know, the IDDC replaced the Indiana Office of Tourism Development. So we've had that newsletter up to the end of the year. So we're springing a new one in January. So we'll keep some information coming out there. But, you know, some of the things that we are working on is um, to have sort of an umbrella website where we can connect in with all of your websites that talk about your quality of life and why it would be great to be where you are living and working and playing wherever in the state. And so we want to be able to then facilitate and getting your message out. So uh, and amplify everything that you're doing. So we're going to be pushing out a bunch of stuff. So we will be in connection with all of you um, through the 21st century talent regions, through the DMOs, through the economic development people. You'll probably hear us from a lot of places in trying to share everything that we do. You know, because if we don't share it and if you and, and get everybody to buy into the same thing, um, we're not doing our job and we're not getting the most for what we're putting out there because you all drive this engine. And uh, if we can just get everybody doing the same thing or, or not the same thing, I want you all being unique, but then being able to share and come into the same uh, channel so that if we get anyone coming who's looking at coming to Indiana for any reason, that they can come to a website and then find out what would it be like to be in Northeast or Southwest or Central or North Central, all these different areas, because they can then connect in with all the good work that you're doing to really showcase your areas. So, um, you know, that's what we want to do is showcase all the good work that you're doing and, and help raise um, your boat as well. So that's, that's our focus. Does that make sense, Bethany? Did that answer your question? It does, yes, thank you. You're welcome, good. Well, I think we'll probably be kind of, they'll, they'll, they'll flip the switch and we'll all be back together again. But um, I've enjoyed sharing with you some of our thoughts and hearing what you're all are doing. Keep doing it. Do not hesitate to um, contact me if there's anything that you have a question on or anything that we can do uh, at the state level to help you at the IDDC. Uh, my email address is E-L-B-E-D-E-L. -E -E so E L for the first name, then B as in boy, E, D as in dog, E L at IDDC.in.gov. Um, and we've got an IDDC website now. That's not going to be the one that I was just referring to. We're still building that, but um, you can find us there as well. Elaine, you had mentioned on common themes that people saw on attraction. You'd mentioned housing. Do you have any more information on that? No, and maybe someone else does. What I was saying is that that was one of the that, that was one of the areas that many of you are working on in the talent attraction area is to have the right kind of housing available so that when people come, they have a place, um, you know, a, a variety or diversity of housing options available to them. 
I, I wanted to say uh, from a, a small rural area here in, in uh, Greensburg uh, that uh, programs like the Destination Development uh, Grant and those those sorts of things really help out uh, you know projects that that do that intertwining between tourism and economic development and talent attraction being able to build that infrastructure uh, and it ties into housing as well because it's an attractor for people who live in our our. Uh, our, uh, community, so that really helps us out. Uh, those of us who, who might not have some of those other coffers, um, and it also helps bring more people to the table. So I just wanted to comment that uh, that's been a very uh, uh, a great program for us. Oh, good. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate those comments. We um, just closed the applications for this year's destination development grants, but they will. You know, we've been doing being able to do those every year. Not as much money as I'd like to put toward it. So, you know, we'll look to see if we can't make that an even better program in the future. But uh, some great projects have really come out of it around the state. And uh, they've, you know, that's been in place even with the Indiana Office of Tourism Development. So we were pleased to kind of keep that going. But thanks for those comments. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Jordan Musson with uh, Hamilton County. I had a question for everybody. Um, part of this is attracting people to your place. How is everyone tracking migration? Tracking migration in and out? That's right, uh, the movement of people. So um, mm -hmm. I should probably step back. Uh, we monitor it with the IRS information, mm -hmm. uh, which of course is delayed. Um, and we recently have been purchasing cell phone information and we're trying to see if there's a way to reliably actively see people in real time move into your area. Is anyone else tracking that stuff as far as like how they're grading their uh, campaigns and that sort of thing? In Louisville, we do that. We have a technological partner, El Toro, um, who does IP targeting. And um, so we partner with them. Um, we're not actively partnering with them right now because I don't know if you've recognized or not, but Louisville's gotten a little bit of bad press as of late. Um, so we had to pause our attraction campaign. Um, but they track by IP address um, across all devices in a home. So you can, um, you can identify an IP address that was geographically residing in one area and then track it when it geographically resides to another area. And it normalizes for all IP addresses and you can even get you can get everything except for the name of the person. You can get the ages, the number of people in the household, income, um, everything and anything under the sun. But we are only able to do it every so often because it's incredibly, um, it would cost us tens of millions of dollars to be able to do it with any kind of regularity. And I think our full um, marketing budget last year was $250,000. So it's not really possible to do it. Other than that, we use um, ACS, Amer American Community Services Census data, which is horrible. And it also goes in arrears and it's estimated. <laughs> so it's a difficult problem to solve without a lot of money. Anybody else have a comment on that? Because I know some of you have that on your dashboards, um, your in and out migration or working, living where they are and working somewhere else kind of thing. And I just looked at the agenda. I was totally wrong. We get to go till 3.15. So we've got a good 10 minutes yet. So uh, please carry on. You know, so if anybody has any other comments on that migration issue, um, please speak up. What else have been big topics that you've all been dealing with? I think the diversity issue is another thing that comes up for Indiana. I mean, mm -hmm. people who do know Indiana think of us as all lily white farmers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, overcoming those stigmas is, is a challenge sometimes. Right. And I think that's why visually on all of our websites, on all of our videos, we really need to focus on making sure that we have good representation from all of our diverse populations and, and can show that. And then you're right, um, we, we're hearing that too. Oh, they're just cornfields there, right? Uh, no, you know, so, you know, being able to show them some of the, the diversity that we have in Indiana, you know, flat to hilly, you know, and those types of things and beautiful streams and, and forest and those types of things to, 
to enjoy uh, is important as well. But you're right. And we're always getting the comment, you don't have mountains and you don't have oceans. Now, if they get up to Lake Michigan, it's going to look like an ocean to them, for one thing. It's beautiful up there. But, um, um, uh, you know, I, I like to come back and say, but, you know, if you live in Indiana, you're going to be able to hop on a plane and get to wherever you want to go or drive uh, to, a mount to the mountains or to the ocean without much problem. And given the cost of living, you'll be able to do that more frequently than others. So try and kind of turn it around on them. If anyone, um, I'm happy to have offline conversations about the diversity, equity, inclusion components of your work. Um, I've been doing this for two years in this role and our entire region is not um, demographically that diverse. Uh, St. Joe County has a different diversity than Elkhart County and Marshall County. Um, but I think it's also important to note to be authentic to who your geography is. So when it comes to um, marketing and that sort of thing, just be mindful of don't misrepresent what your region is. Um, that is not a, I would, I would not endorse that. Um, and I, I think too, just a couple of things we're doing, um, we're doing a regional belonging survey. So how do, how do people feel about living here? Do they feel that they're represented? And this is gonna go across all our counties. We're working with a data partner on this um, and hope doing it every couple of years to, to see if there's progress because our biggest struggle has been data with diversity, equity, inclusion, tying, um, demographics to income. You ask an employer to, to give the, the wages of their employees by demographics, you're going to get probably a no, which is what I got. Mm -hmm. Fair enough, um, unless they're under government contracts. Um, so we're, we're testing that out this year. And then we also created a program specific for minority and women-owned businesses, which is a cohort model um, to help them build capacity and sustainability because we know entrepreneurship is the fastest way to eliminate and the most sustainable way to eliminate the racial wealth divide. Good points, Bethany. Elaine, well, I don't know if this is a, a, an actual struggle that we, we have, but it seems like every day we get a phone call from a stakeholder who had the brilliant idea of launching a remote worker strategy. Um, and so it, it seems, you know, amid COVID, everyone has identified that that is the next big thing. Um, so there's one, some pressure from stakeholders to get something going there um, and, and kind of, uh, hammer out whatever that could be, um, especially in, but given limited resources, it's really, really difficult to kind of just launch that out of nowhere. So that's one area that we're looking at, but not quite sure how to tackle at this point. And are you saying to attract people to Indiana who are re working remotely for companies other places? Right, yep, yep. And as an economic development organization, it almost goes a little backwards from what we've always done, which is try and bring jobs in, bring businesses in. So now thinking about people that would work for companies outside of the region is not something we focused on. But we do have our university network that we work with. So we've talked about doing a, um, uh, reaching out to alumni. So someone that at least has a tie to the region mm -hmm. um, and, you know, connecting and saying, hey, have you considered relocating? Also working with some of our um, uh, co-working spaces that we found during COVID ended up being kind of temporary work locations for folks that came home during that time right. to stay with their folks and wanted to find some temporary space, but we're planning to go back to Chicago or New York or wherever mm -hmm. they come from. So, um, but we're still in the early stages of that. Well, I mean, it makes a lot of sense because can you imagine being having a New York or a San Francisco salary and living in Indiana? I mean, uh, what a great way to build net worth for sure. And actually, let me tell you what's going on in, on the state level. The Indiana Chamber, as well as the Indiana Technology and Innovation Association are both supporting a remote worker um, legislation to provide some kind of incentive. Uh, that really hasn't been totally defined. I mean, the bill did get filed, I think, just yesterday um, or last, last Friday, whenever they needed, maybe just yesterday, whatever, recently. Uh, and so I haven't looked at the details of it, though, but I know they do want it to be administered through the IDDC, so uh, we'll see if that gets passed. Um, other states have tried that, and you may have seen um, some of the examples around the country. And, you know, some say they are having success. Um, I think probably it's too early to determine if it's going to be long-term success, if people will actually stay because they got the extra dollars coming in to either spend on a house or, you know, moving expenses, whatever it might be. So uh, uh, we'll have to watch that legislation and see what our legislators think about that. I saw some mics go off. Uh, so anybody want to say anything? 
No? Okay. Hey, Elaine, real quickly. Hi, it's Kathy Rinke down in Spencer County. Mm -hmm. um, the state may be doing this, but um, we've often wondered out loud, how can we find um, in attracting, how can we find pockets in uh, outside of Indiana so that we're not stealing talent within or trading talent, I should say, within our own state? How can we find maybe those um, manufacturers or those businesses or uh, um, that pocket of employees or workforce that has been closed? Like if there's a big closure in, in Dubuque, Iowa, or, or you know what I mean? Like outside of our area that maybe we could target those areas. Is mm -hmm. that being done or is that? Uh, yeah, and I bet Ryan is um, biting at the bit to kind of tell you about it, right, <laughs> Ryan? Aren't you doing that in Northeast Indiana yet? I'm sorry, what, what say that you again? You weren't listening, we cut I'm, you. <laughs> no. All the war notices, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I so we, um, <laughs> yes, that's right. So we have been tracking war notices. Um, one of the things though, we actually got some pushback from our uh, local economic development partners feeling a little bit um, like, we, we, we operate with a code of ethics that we don't um, do any sort of um, attraction of people or um, businesses within the state of Indiana and felt a little uncomfortable with even doing so with our neighboring states and in spite of some of the, the stuff in, in Illinois and, and active outreach. So. Um, we, we haven't pursued an actual strategy at a regional level. However, we did the homework on creating tools for employ, employers to respond to warn notices. So when they come, we sort of give them the, the package to respond to those warn notices and, and reach out. Um, we don't have an active strategy though as the sort of institutional economic development group. Okay, yeah, I knew you were doing something. Does that make sense, Kathy, that, that they check with this, all the surrounding states to get their their warn notices that say we're you know we're we we're going to lay off or terminate or whatever this many workers and then I thought at one time the strategy was and it sounds like going to the employer now and having them have some contact with those individuals if they're if they've got the talent that they need uh, and saying that you know just move moved to Indiana. And there, there, we have had a little bit of success with that, um, which has been which has been interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good question. Now I think we're coming down to our last couple of minutes. So if you haven't said it yet, now's the time. Well, I've got to tell you, we're excited about, from the state level, we're excited about working with all of you. Um, I have been um, so supportive of the 21st century talent regions, even when I was still at the IEDC. Uh, because I think they're so important and, and as well as our regional development authorities, et cetera. You know, so we have to really um, continue to encourage the regionalism because I think it, it can be helpful to be looking at your whole region as opposed to your, your own community or your own county and really make some headways with, with uh, accumulating you know, dollars and spending them better together and just being more efficient and more effective. So um, uh, again, we want to do whatever we can to help support you all. All right, I'm giving you the last word. And Kai Chuck, I see you're on, but you haven't even turned on your camera. Well, maybe he's not really there. <laughs> hey, Elaine, I'm here. I'm just using the cell phone because uh, I'm working remotely. Okay. My apologies. <laughs> Kai, Kai is an associate from the IEDC at one time. So now working at Westfield, right? Right, Kai? Correct. Mm -hmm. City of Westfield. And as you had mentioned before, we're doing a lot here in Westfield to attract um, the demographics that we don't have here in improving the, the spectrum of the residents here. Uh, we're redeveloping the downtown park. So right. that'll be a future gathering place and develop a walkable community. We also have some other uh, developments in the housing area that are attracting uh, the older demographic. So hopefully in the future, we will be able to attract a, a more diverse workforce. Right. Uh, and we're working hard to uh, accomplish that in the near future. Well, and you also have Grand Park up there that attracts a whole bunch of people. When they, you know, when parents come to watch their kids play and they've got time between soccer games and baseball games and 
basketball games, there's the time to kind of market and tell them what a great place this might be to live or start a business or, or, or find a job. So uh, you're, you're absolutely correct, uh, Elaine. And that's a good example of that is Abbott because the Abbott uh, folks had some uh, games here with their children and they discovered Westfield and uh, uh, they thought that this would be a great place to locate their business and that exactly what happened here. And that's one of the benefits of Graham Park that uh, we originally, I don't think they realized. If Kai followed us in, sorry, Kai, you got, you got cut off there. <laughs> we were talking about being able to uh, convert visitors who come with their children to watch them play sports at Grand Park. And I know other places around the state had that same opportunity. <laughs> 